Welcome back. In our last video, we have discussed PDQ deployment overview and basic deployment. Before I start this next video about PDQ custom deployment, I want to make sure that you go back to snapshot and restore section. If you have missed this section, then please, please check these videos and make sure you take a snapshot of your labs. Nobody likes reinstalling operating system again and again, even if it's a lab environment, it is definitely going to annoy you. And th this is one of the things that we tell people that when you have features like these, then you really like IT, but when you don't, then you will hate IT. So now getting back to the PDQ custom deployment and jumping into our lab. If you remember, we are using Spiceworks 2018V, which is your 2019 server. And another interesting thing, because 6.7, the, the version that I'm using, actually don't have 2019. So if you uh, go to the Spiceworks, uh, let's say the server, and you check this right here, it says uh, operating system is 2016. That's remember, we didn't have that option. So don't get confused that when you see this, you're actually using 2019 right here. And that is probably going to get fixed when we install the new update for this which we don't because we're not doing a vmware training so we really don't need that but just to give you uh just so you if you have forgot uh and um to clear some confusion okay so now this is where things are going to get real and uh f well that's great that you had a packaged already in the library so let's say for example if you were to pay for this and you became a let's say enterprise uh you, you buy the enterprise license and you go to the package library some of the well-known uh softwares are already included in this uh, so so I should, to give you an example a lot of people um are going to basically call you and say hey i want firefox i want filezilla and i want team i want stuff like that skype these are our normal calls for you but you can see this is kind of like if you're using the free version then it's grayed out number one what if you're still using an enterprise version and you don't see that in the in the package then what happens then uh, you can still use the free version, but you just need to do a little research in the deployment. That's why we call it custom deployment. So our scenario is that we don't have a solution here. It's not prepackaged. It doesn't have it. Uh, so what, what do we do? So the, the real world call is going to be, we would like to get Zoom installed on our a meeting laptop or maybe my computer and remember zoom is like out there right now it's basically like every single company every next company that i hear they're using zoom right now it used to be like webex and stuff like that but uh, they're catching up they're really really in there in the market right now you, you will probably just go and type indeed.com and help this with zoom you know you'll probably find so many help this positions even talking about zoom how to use zoom and stuff like that Okay, so how do we install Zoom on our staff machine? Uh, first thing is then what you need to do uh, in the real world environment, you have to manage things uh, correctly. But in the lab, we don't care, right? So what, in the real world environment, you're going to have a machine where then you will like create a, like a software uh, a folder where you can make it a repository meaning you're going to install these softwares and then you're going to download it here in this folder so this is going to be your one place where you can keep things because you may have multiple it professionals and you don't want to be like okay who's installing which version stuff like that you don't want to get all that confusing some of the people they have, have it really really organized they may have, be even using tools for this so let's not get into that i just wanted to tell you that you don't just start deploying things you know and the second warning is that again a reminder that anytime you deploy a software this pers this person may be working on a browser or something so you want to make sure that you have another machine for testing you want to see what happens to this machine so then you can correctly do the deployment you don't want to just deploy it and kill their browser and then you have all the problems with a cust with a client or staff member you don't want to do that right so let's get going and in install zoom and i'll show you some cool way of how to uh do things okay so we're gonna go to zoom download very simple and this is what i like about pdq because it's so simple like you just go there download the thing and just push it out you know so right now it says okay what do you want they have some app store stuff like that we're interested in the exe file so we're gonna go ahead and download this and there you go we downloaded it and we're going to do is copy this just to keep it a little 
professional, not too professional in the lab, we're going to put it in this deploy uh, folder. So right now we're going to right click on it and we're going to click on deploy with PDQ and we're going to say yes. Now watch what happens. What I like about this is that it will pick everything for you. Everything is done, but it didn't help you too much. It didn't give you a silent switch command line. Then this is where I was talking about. If you're new to deployment and you don't know about what switch it, uh, this this application is, is using, then you're going to start deploying it on this machine, which I'll show you in a second right now. The first thing we should do is we should name this package and we should call it Zoom. So right now I went to properties and I named it Zoom and I click saved, right? Everything is good so far. It's It helped you creating the package and everything, but it didn't pick that silent switch for you. So what do you do now? I'm going to close it and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to deploy it once. And now I'm going to pick the staff machine here. Or you could, could, you could have gone here to choose directory and find that machine, but I know the name of that machine, so I'm going to add the machine. Check mark is there, so that means this this uh, um, machine can see that, the software. So now I'm deploying it to that machine right now. It is connecting. It got copied. So this means that everything is running, and it's running on this machine. So let's see if it gets installed. So like I said, if the application is okay with not using any switch or anything, which is rare in, in deployments, a lot of time application usually use some kind of switch because you don't you want to tell it, uh, did it like install silently or did it not install silently? But you can see right now, with, even with EXC, it says it's successful. So how do I find it now? If I come here and look for Zoom, start Zoom app, and there you go, Zoom is already installed on this computer now sometimes if you see that when you deploy a software a fresh software to the computer and it didn't open up then what you need to do is you need to uh, right click here let me just open this actually one more time and if you let's say you you clicked on it and it doesn't open up like that right and i'm going to just minimize this just to show you just to make it uh, like real so it doesn't come up like this for the first time sometimes you may have to restart the computer or just come over here to processes and just kill this. Maybe there you have multiple processes running and none of them are working. So just kill it like that. And then you go back to the software and just open that on that machine. So you see something here. I want I wanted to give Zoom example because even though it didn't have any silent switch, it still installed that Zoom application silently. So you have to keep in mind if if maybe a software that is not designed that way when it doesn't when it didn't have let's say if it didn't have a silent switch then it's a little alarming for you you have to make sure that you do a research and that's why i say use a test machine so you can see the 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 graphical interface of how things are happening because if it doesn't it didn't have a, a silent switch in here this means it can actually show on the on the machine and it will just prompt the user to install that software even though they won't have access but still they will be like very worried that somebody just did something to their computer and you don't this will be a, a, um, a not a good moment because you know uh, unless you okay here's another thing i want to i want to go a little bit back you don't just install software on computers in a real world environment. You have to tell a user that I'm doing this on your computer just to make sure it didn't come to a point where they get scared or they're like, okay, this is not an ethical way of doing things. You know, you don't just install things and it just pops up on my computer like that. So, of course, you have to kind of like, you know, it, if it's a call, then you call them back and say, hey, uh, I'm going to be doing this installation at this time are you available they may say oh i'm going to meeting but my computer is going to be available to you or something like that so at least they know what you're doing but still you don't want to be in a situation where you push out the software and then it start and it comes to the point where it's like okay uh, install the software because that's this defeating the purpose of deployment you know you want to do it either silent or you want to do it automation so it does just go through all the way and they have the software on their desktop just like what you what you have seen for zoom let's do another example example let's see if we can pick another one and this time i'm going to show you something else 
I am going to take you to this site and this <laughs> manage engine also have deployments in my last videos inventory videos if you are taking this course I have shown you how to install manage engine and uh, what it can do so here you can do something you can type this let's say for example I type file Zilla manage engine if I can spell it right manage engine download I might have spelled it wrong but here so you can see if I click on this this is a really cool area from manage engine as you can see you can come to this this page by coming to this whole uh, link right here like this products slash desktop whatever but if you just type that in Google like that filezilla manage engine download it's just gonna straight take you to that software area the cool thing about this is if I go a little bit back on this and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because I feel like you guys won't be able to see this so if I show you this look what they have here they have this a site with a huge inventory list if I click on the windows I'm going to make this a little bigger, even more bigger, so you guys can even see. So here, if you see this big list, let's see how far they have gone. Like if you can go all the way down from 2009, they're building this repository. So for me, I think this would be a perfect place to find a very rare type application, which where you think that, you know, I'm not able to find a switch for it. Sometimes, of course, the best thing you can do is to go to their site, that vendor site, and look for the switch installation or Google it. Google type Zoom uh, in a silent install. So you will just right away land on some pages where you will see Zoom dash silent slash QN, something like that. For example, I have Zoom right here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to do a make sure that I want to install Zoom with silent. I'm going to click on here. And if you scroll down, you can see they have a full MSI and meaning that it doesn't require any switch even with the MSI. And I can even download the MSI and sometimes you do need MSI and because some software may not be able to accept EXE, but PDQ does that. But if, if I give you another example of, let's say, FileZilla, I can come here and maybe in the browser I can do Control F and I say File zilla and you see how i got to the client and let's say for example i want to install um a file zilla um, i mean this is kind of a little older file zilla but of course i if i wanted to know the the switch for it i can just do x64 that's my operating system and if i come all the way down you see i can file the uninstall switch also meaning i can uninstall from the pdq if i want to and i also have a slash s that is what i'm looking for so if for example i go to the filezilla site right now and i want to install a brand new uh, filezilla download let's just do that right now so if i go to the the filezilla download and i want to do a 64 bit right here i'm going to do download and let's see which one do i want i'm going to do this one filezilla pro filezilla only i don't want the pro one and I'm going to install that one and save it. So I, I saved it, right? And here, what I will do is, even though I should just go back and you know put it in um, in my download, I should do that. Let's just do that just to keep things clean. And if I right click here and do the deploy, sometimes it will automatically pick the switch for you. Sometimes you the way I showed you, you have to do it that way. So let's see if it automatically picked it for me. So right now it didn't pick it, right? So how do I add a switch to it? If I do custom, now you could have just gone to the test machine and just deploy it that way. And if you don't see any results, then great. Like, you know, if you don't see any uh, interaction on the screen, then that's great. But maybe I need to put the silent switch right here. So I did that. I went into the, the Manage Engine repository, just like that site. And I'm going to come here and name this one now FileZilla and save it. And let's give this a try now. So I'm going to go ahead and open. And I got the package right here. Deploy once. And we're going to pick Staff Machine and deploy it now. So it's connecting. It's running. Oh, I should actually show you. So, so far, 
nothing shown on the, the desktop. So the silent switch did work for us. Yeah, right here it says successful. So I'm going to go here and now look for file Zilla. There you go. File Zilla is available to us. Customer is happy. Staff is happy. They opened it. And now, okay, how do I put now? Okay, this is another call now. How do I put, you know, I, I get so many people, I get so many people calling me. How do I connect to the, uh, the, the client or the vendor? I'm going to talk about this later on in our other skills for tools and stuff which you will be definitely learning this stuff too but at this point you have learned two things you can directly drop a exe into a pdq and it will take care of it sometimes it won't take care of it it won't even run so then you have to do your research so just go to the either the site or go to google type filezilla silent install and then you will land on some pages or you can go to the pdq uh, sorry manage engine type filezilla manage engine download so when you go to that link and i will put it in the description too just for to make it easy for you guys then search that uh, even if an older version of it is available at least you know the switch now so that's how you do things in a custom installation and next we are going to touch up on different installation different way of installing from using different softwares i'll see you in that video thank you